Hi, my name is Christina Kwok from Chemistry 112, and we're going to be talking about the valence bond theory of nitrogen dioxide. We're going to first talk about um, how to draw the Lewis structure first, and then um, moving on to how to draw the Vesper diagram, and then moving on to um, drawing the electron uh, box diagram, and then finally concluding with the um, contour diagram for the valence bond theory portion. So to begin the Lewis structure, uh, we have to first know the valence electrons and the total number of electrons involved to make our skeletal um, structure. So nitrogen has five valence electrons, oxygen has six valen valence electrons, we have two oxygen in the NO2 molecule, so then that's 12 electrons from the oxygens, and then we add five, we have 17 electrons right here. We're going to draw the Lewis structure as I have already drawn here. So we're going to immediately see that we have a free radical on the nitrogen atom and we're going to have a double bond with one of the oxygen and nitrogen and then a single bond with the nitrogen and oxygen on this side. Immediately um, from looking at this molecule we're going to notice that this is a sp2 um, hybridization um, orbital just because we have a bond here bond here and then we also have an electron standing right there so we pretty much have three electron groups um, bonding onto the nitrogen atom there and then we're also going to see from here knowing the sp2 hybrid orbital um, hybridization orbital we're going to know that this is going to be a trigonal planar mol um, electron geometry but then because of this freestanding electron right there it's going to push down um, because of the electron repulsion strength is much greater than the bonding pairs, which are these. Um, so then we're going to have a bent shape for our molecular ge geometry. Moving on to the Vesper diagram, um, based on the, um, the information we gather from the Lewis structure, we know that it's going to be a sp2 hybridization um, orbital. And we also, we also know that it's going to be a bent shape. So this is how we draw our Vesper diagram right here. We have a double bond and a single bond and a um, free electron standing right there. And then um, based on the, um, the Vesper rules, the diagram rules we know, for a bent atom, uh, we're going to have a um, less than 120 uh, bond angle. For the bonding pair, uh, for the bonding atoms, and then also from this diagram, it's good to know that we already have a sigma bond right here and another one right there, and a pi bond right there. So when we do our hybridization, we're gonna know that we're gonna have one pi bond and two sigma bonds forming in this molecule. This is just some pictures showing um, of the Lewis structures in the Vesper diagram we have just drawn. So over here we see the um, the nitrogen atom right there. Um, that's the nitrogen right there and the oxygen and the oxygen. We know that there's a free radical electron right there. We see a pi bond and a sigma bond and a sigma bond. And we know that this is a sp2. sp2 um, hybridization orbital. And then we also see the um, less than 120 degree angle over here as well and then we also know that this is a bent shape um, and then same thing here as we have seen we know that there is a pi bond and a sigma bond and a sigma bond so looking over here we see the pi bonds right here and then we see the high um, the hybrid hybrid is um, hybrid hybridized orbitals bonding over here right there and then from um, from this picture, from these pictures, we know that um, the molecular shape right here is less than 120 degrees because we know that any free electrons, um, any free electrons, and a bonding pair repulsion is greater than a bonding pair to a bonding pair repulsion. Again, this is the Vesper diagram. This is the oxygen, nitrogen. This is going to be considered our free radical electron, the freestanding electron on nitrogen. 
So we're going to assume that there's one night, um, a double bond right there and one single bond. So over here we have a pi bond, sigma bond, and a sigma bond. And then we also know from before, this is less than 120 degrees. This is a bent shape, um, molecular geometry. And then um, electron geometry. We know that this is going to be a trigonal planar. And then <clears throat> the reason why the bond angles are less than 120 degrees is because of that free um, et, um, electron right there. So any free electrons or lone pairs actually, except this is not a lone pair, but a free electron still has better repulsion strengths. So electron with a bonding pair repulsion is greater than a bonding pair with bonding pair repulsion. And again, um, this is showing a sp2 hybrid or hybrid, uh, hybridized orbital. Next, we go through the electron box diagram. We first start with the nitrogens. We have the ground state of nitrogen, the excited state, and the bond state. But as we can see as we go, we do not need to have um, we do not have any excited state of the nitrogen because um, when we fill out the valence shell, we're going to see one, two, three, four, five. We already have enough um, elect um, unpaired electrons to be able to uh, bond the oxygens. So we're going to hybridize these right here. Um, and then you're going to see the two. This is going to be considered the lone pair. Um, However, we're going to see that um, from this uh, paired electrons, we're going to see how the uh, free radical electron is going to be uh, formed. And then um, over here we see, over here these two are going to signify the um, sigma bond um, that's going to form with the nitrogens and the oxygens. And then this is um, going to represent the formation of a pi bond with one of the oxygens. As you can see, the double bond oxygen immediately, we're, we're going to know that it's going to form a pi bond um, with a nitrogen atom. Then we move on to figure out the oxygens. The single bonded oxygen right here is not going to hybridize, nor is it going to ex uh, become excited because it'll, it has enough spaces or unpaired electrons to um, form uh, a bond with the nitrogen. So um, moving on to the double bond, we have the ground excited and uh, hybridized. Um, we don't need to excite the um, double bonded oxygen atom because we know that there's going to be two lone pairs present on it and one of just only one of the oxygen is going to form a sigma bond with the nitrogen atom and this one right here is going to form a pi bond with the nitrogen atom so this is going to form a bond with this right here to form a pi bond so after we hybridize the s the the, the sp2 orbital we're going to see the two lone pairs right here and then one sigma um, open and one pi bond open for bonding so we're going to just go ahead and start bonding these atoms so we're going to start with the double bond oxygen this is going to bond with this right here and this is going to bond with this to form the pi bond and this is a sigma bond and changing the color again this is going to form a bond right here forming a sigma bond and this is going to share um, its electron with the nitrogen and this is why we see that um, one left over. This is representing the um, unpaired electron on top of nitrogen, that free radical electron on nitrogen. So here is the Vesper diagram. I'm showing it again. We see the free radical um, electron right here. This 
is representing this right here. And then we see the um, double bond oxygen with nitrogen. There's one sigma bond and one pi bond. It's um, being depicted by the bond, the box diagram here. We see the pi bond here forming and then the sigma bond here forming. So we have that sigma and pi bond bonding from the double, um, doubly bonded oxygen and the nitrogen. And then the single bond, the sigma bond here, is being depicted from this um, singly bonded oxygen right here. This one is being, this one is forming a bond with the nitrogen atom right there to form the sigma bond. Okay, this is the um, molecule that I have formed together using the molecular um, toolkit. So over here, this is our oxygen, nitrogen, oxygen. These are the lone pairs of oxygen. Lone pairs. And then this is the free radical on the nitrogen. This is the single bond between a nitrogen and oxygen. This is the double bond forming on oxygen and nitrogen. Again, this is a pi bond, sigma bond, sigma bond right there. And this model doesn't really show us too well of the actual geometry, but this right here, the bond angles would be less than 120 degrees due to the, um, the repulsion of this um, electron right there. So again, electron or lone pair um, with a bonding pair repulsion is greater than bonding pair with bonding pair repulsion. And again, this is a bent shape with a sp2 hybridized orbital. And then next, now we're doing the contour diagram now that we have finished the electron box diagram. So as we know, we had one pi bond and one sigma bond forming between the double bond oxygen and the nitrogen. So this is what we have here, the sigma bond forming and the pi bonds forming right there. And then that double bond oxygen had two lone pairs right there, which is shown right here. And then on the nitrogen, we know that there was one sigma bond between the oxygen for the singly bonded oxygen. So there's that sigma bond right there. And um, over here, we have the nitrogen with a free radical electron right there because um, it is sharing, um, because oxygen had taken or, or sharing that electron um, that the nitrogen had. Not only that, oxygen, because it was able to receive that electron from the nitrogen atom, it was able to fulfill its octet. And just to clarify um, which orbitals are um, bonding, we see the, well, first with the double bonded oxygen, the um, lone pairs were in the sp2 orbital. So there, we see that right there. And then um, for the sigma bond between the double bonded oxygen and nitrogen, we saw that the sigma bond formed between the sp2 of nitrogen and a sp2 of oxygen. And then the pi, um, the pi bond was formed between the p orbital um, of the oxygen and the um, p orbital of nitrogen as well. And then over here for the singly bonded oxygen with the nitrogen, the sigma bond uh, formed between the 2p orbital of oxygen and um, the sp2 orbital of the nitrogen. And then we saw that um, the free radical electron was in the sp2 orbital. And then to um, label some of the, um, the other in information on this molecule, we know that this is less than 120 degree for a bond angle because we know that the um, lone pair or freestanding electron um, has a stronger repulsion strength than a bonding pair. So that's why this electron right here is going to be pushing down, um, decreasing the bond angle between the bonding pairs of oxygens. And we also know from this um, and from the Vesper model that we have said that this is a bent shape molecular ge geometry that is 
um, that was derived from the um, the electron geometry, which was uh, trigonal planar. And then this is also a sp2 um, hybrid on the central atom of nitrogen.